one of the fun things about being a YouTuber is getting free stuff. Like this welder. This welder is a scam, but yet at the same time is actually not a scam. I'll explain that more later on in this video. But, basically, I received this welder about nine days ago. And getting stuff out of the blue is really actually not that uncommon for me. A lot of sponsors are usually drop shipping from somewhere over in China, Korea, Japan, from California, places like that. And so usually what happens is the item shows up, and then I end up with an email, usually after the day it was delivered, in order to explain what it is that they sent me and why. So, when this ended up showing up, I really didn't think too much of it. I set it aside, and I waited for the email to show up. Except for, the email never showed up. So, I posted up on the Facebook group, and I posted up on the community tab of YouTube. And some of you were very helpful. And I will post up some stuff that you guys sent me later on in this video. Without question, I fully expect the Vevor 130 to be what is compared to this the most, and so therefore I've got them next to each other. As you can see really quickly, the Vevor is much bigger, and it outweighs this scammer box by a good solid three, almost four pounds. The quality difference between the two of these, even though the Vevor is actually listed cheaper in most places than this is, are insane. So the Vevor uses a replaceable MIG gun. It's your standard run-of-the-mill MK-14. Both of these seem to have the exact same ends on them, but this one is a non-replaceable. That's the end of the comparables on this. I can't believe this one is listed at $30 to $20 more than this Vevor because the quality in this thing is horrible. They sent a one pound roll. Vevor sends a two pound roll. This thing here doesn't even have a spring. All it is is this cotter pin and just trying to feed the wire in, I've had it catch the cotter pin twice. So it needs to have a spring. As you can see on the Vevor, it's got this nice tensioner setup that you can vary. We've got our standard clip-down assembly here. We've got that same kind of assembly, only it's lower and down off to the side. So they do look to be pretty similar, but that doesn't make them the same. This one here uses a standard roller. This one uses some sort of weird square cog roller that I cannot find any aftermarket for. So that has been made its own little unit, and therefore it's worthless. The other thing is, this thing shows up as only using 0.8 wire, but yet this is for 0.8 and 0.1 or 030 or 035. This is also the same setup, but definitely a lot better quality. The other thing is, is this has metal coming out of it, and this just has some sort of little, I don't even know what to call that, like McDonald's straw, I, I guess. That's going to get worn off by flux core in a matter of just a few hours worth of usage. All right, that's enough griping. Let's button it up, see if it'll actually weld something. Got our great little hitbox welding helmet out. This thing is awesome. Definitely worth the 80 bucks. This, we've got a compendium of metal here. So I came over here because I saw this chart because I figured I would at least use the chart in order to help out here. So it's got this nice little dial thing. 
and it says to set it at four for the first piece, says to set it at six for the next piece, and the last couple of chunks that I got will set it at eight. Except for the dial only does 1.5 to three. But luckily, it has the amperage rating on the outside, so I guess we're just going to dial it to, like, right in there, I guess? And try that. You guys can hear me. We got our base piece, we got our small piece here, we've got this set to what the chart said. So let's see if we can at least tack weld this. Okay, that is definitely not the worst weld I've ever done. All right, let's see if we can run a line. actually rather impressive. That wire is burning really, really grungy, but that's actually rather impressive. Alright, let's try sticking this on the outside of here. See if we can tack weld this without having it push it. No, it pushed it. Okay, so this has the same issue my Vevor does, where it takes it a sec before it actually fires. All right, so tack welding this thing is never going to be good for. But it definitely... Well, that was inconsistent. All right, so let's take this. And let's tack it on here so we've got a good ground. Actually, let's do this. Can I get so that you guys can see what I'm doing here? Let me see here. If I put that like that, maybe I can get it so you guys can see. There we go. Okay. So let's crank this thing up and let's deliberately burn it. So as hot as I have it cranked, it really should end up flaring through. Yeah. Okay. So let's try this again as fully cranked as it is and run a bead. actually not that bad. That bead actually looks relatively decent. It's got a lot of flux on it. We'll clean it up. Let's flip it over and let's do this side here and then I'll go clean it up on the wire bristle. Alright, so we're going to let that cool. We're going to clean it up on the wire bristle a little bit. Actually, to heck with letting it cool. We'll just grab this. So we're going to go clean that up on the wire bristle and see how much of it's actually flux. Here we go. That is not the worst, but not the best weld ever. One thing that's interesting here is that the flux burning off on this does not smell sweet like most flux does. This flux, as it burns off, smells like oil burning off. So there's that. There's these.
If you can see down inside there, it did burn through decently. If we flip this over, we can see it burn through. Whoops. We can see that it burned through on the inside almost. So that didn't quite burn through there, so that setting should have been higher. All right, let's go talk about this thing inside. Okay, so is the welder a scam? But it actually is a welder. The answer to the question is yes. This is where we get into the Sherlock Holmes of the story. So here we are, we're at our community tab where we posted up the original picture. I ended up reaching out to Rylon and speaking with them. And basically I got a hell no, it's not my welder. But that's the end of what I got for a description from them. But in the meantime, because I had this picture posted, there were individuals who were absolutely the Dr. Watson of the story and went through finding some information. The first one that people managed to find was this unit here. $134 posted on Amazon. You can find that the post only happened about a week or so before the machine was sent to me. That is interesting. This store thing does not exist. There is no company underneath this. This Trozy whatever is a dead end. If you click on it, ironically though, it is routed to a place in Colorado for where it's housed. Now that's important. We're going to follow up with that in just a second. I then ended up with somebody sending me this. If you've got two eyeballs, it's easy to tell that this is exactly the same welder, just somebody painted it red and put this interesting little logo on it. Yet again, $130 marked down from $160, sounds like a good deal. So you come down here to, oh, you can't see it because my head's in the way, wait a minute. If we click on the manufacturer for this, we end up with this company here. Overall, positive rating, 67%, 3.8 rating, sounds absolutely beautiful. Totally what I want to buy. We call this phone number, and we find out it's a disconnected number. But what we end up finding also is this address, which ends up aligning with another address. Don't bother looking up the address. The address is fake, and it just takes you to a dead-end zone warehouse that has nothing to do with this company. It doesn't exist there. If you follow this particular company, you end up in Colorado also at another dead-end warehouse, which I'm assuming that's where the cowboy thing here comes from as far as Colorado is concerned. I'm not going to bother ripping open the welder to see whether the chip is real. I guarantee that this is not what we're going to find for a chip inside. The reason being is because if you take the MIG 135A and you start Googling it, you will end up finding this. It is a Reboot. Yet again, Reboot is a real brand. But I emailed Reboot. They say they don't sell this thing. So at this point, we're on dead end number one, dead end number two, dead end number three, but we did end up with some information here. What I ended up with for information here was that it is rated, even though it says 135, in this, it says it's actually a MiG-100. So we started Googling MiG-100s, and with that MiG-100, we found this which is yet again the fourth version we have found. So if we click on this, we're going to end up down the rabbit hole to this picture here on Alibaba. Now, on Alibaba, there is at least about nine or ten individuals that sell these. And at this point, I think I finally figured out why this thing ended up showing up 
at my house without me ever asking for it and with no information. My slogan that I have had for many years now has been cheap welder, million dollar ideas. And at one point, I actually got a hold of several different manufacturers on Alibaba in order to see if the version of the Go Plus welder that I used for many, many years on this channel, if I could get a version of it that had the RCG logo and priced at about 150 bucks in order to be able to sell to you guys, my viewers. Because it's the welder that also they do this with. They also sell it under different brand names that you can put a logo on. The problem that I found out was that I could only order them if I ordered them in an entire 40 foot shipping container worth and I would have to store them and then ship them from my house. Well, I ended up not doing that obviously because I would have had to have bought a set of 200 minimum in order to make it worth it. And I wasn't gonna try and store that here. As you guys have seen, my garage is cluttered enough as it is. So here's what I think is going on. What I think is that the original person I got a hold of on Alibaba must have sent me a sample like I requested almost a year ago to receive and never got back in contact with me. So is the welder real? Yes, the welders that you are seeing, they are real. They are a functional, although I'm not sure how long they would be functional, they are a functional welder. Would I buy one at the price that they seem to be retailing? No, I would not. I would buy this Vevor MiG 130A. It is better, it is stronger, and it has stick welding capability, and it has striking TIG capability you can get into, which I have yet to try. It comes with more wire, and at the price that they sell on a regular basis, it's actually cheaper than most of these MiG-100 cookie cutter welders that apparently are showing up with fake branding on them. And there we go. That is the rabbit hole of the internet that I wanted to take you guys along on as we ended up scurrying down through and finding different information. For those of you that sent me really, really good detailed messages and information, I appreciate viewers like you. You guys are the VIP of this video and it would not have happened without your support. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful.